Welcome back to the channel, folks. I'm your host, Fog. Thank you for joining another episode here on Fat Old Gamers. And today, we're gonna finish this. Finish what you started is the mantra here today, or the, uh, the motto for just the day. The back glass, done. Backboard, or back glass, and the new DMD is in place. And the final thing that we have to do is get rid of that logo. Essentially, we need to cut out the area that will fit the screen so that when this is up there, you actually have the screen showing through here, right here in this area. And I'll show how to do that. It's not gonna be too much and then hopefully we don't break it, we don't destroy it, because this is a one shot kind of opportunity. Like it's either gonna work or I'm gonna screw it up and it'll break or shatter in some area or something horrible like that and there will be no nice looking pinball table here anymore or at least factory looking let's say that so i'm going to try to do this with a dremel and i'm going to try to score the area out and some of it's going to be eyeballing some of it's going to be measurements uh i'll try to do my best i've got a flat edge ruler they call it I, I know it's used for like hobbyists like my uh my mother used to cut patterns and stuff like that on a on a little like mat with a razor and she would use this she gave it to me a long time ago it's going to come in handy here and i'll show that process and then once we're done hopefully everything's looking good slap it all back together see how it works and you know do some showcasing of games and things like that with the uh with the DMD and the back glass in place. So stay tuned. Okay, folks, the first thing we're gonna do here, we've already measured it. This is my lip edge ruler that we're gonna use and a razor blade. And we're gonna try to like scour some area out so we know exactly what we're dealing with. And as far as I can tell, some of this is gonna take some eyeballing, but measuring, measuring as well, but I mean eyeballing to make sure it's looking straight. I'm, I'm most nervous about it being crooked and getting too much of the screen when I need it to, I don't want it to get beyond the bezel too far. I really only want the screen to be what gets captured inside of the, the rectangle we're gonna cut. So that's gonna be the most concerning piece but right now the first thing i know we need to do is get rid of the at games logo itself so that is pretty simple and that gets us pretty close to where we need to be in terms of it's as long as we can get rid of the at games green we will still be within the boundary of the screen itself with a little bit of the bezel showing. There's not much I can do there. Um, if I cut it exactly where the screen is, you would have a little bit of the S on this side and a very small tiny bit of the A. And I don't want that, so we're just gonna cleanly cut that out. We'll let a little bit of the bezel show and that'll be that. Then the, the trickier part comes to be how high we need to go so that's that's going to be the main part that i'm most concerned about so since we know we got to get rid of the a this little lip edge right here gives a square edge i guess you would say and at that point we will just scour this so i know where to cut and i'm going to be very nitpicky on where it is here so i apologize this <laughs> my my plastic wrap is stopping the ruler from moving just ever so slightly each way. Okay, there's our DMD box, best I can guess. So, yep, I am going to Start squaring this off and I'll throw a, uh, it's hard to see here what the, where the marks are. I don't know if I flip on this camera. There you go. You can kind of see a mark there and a mark there. They're really light, but I'm going to square it off. We'll get the box done 
and then grab the Dremel and we'll go take it outside and go cut it. Oh, hi. So they say that a lot of people try to de-stress before they, you know, get into something that they have to have to have full focus on. They also say that a lot of people who chew their nails are perfectionists. Well, I was able to give up on that after chewing my fingers down to the bone, essentially, fingernails. And now I think I'm ready to do this. And they also say that a person who procrastinates is putting up something that they don't like and they don't feel that's going to be good for them. People say a lot of things. All right, folks, enough of the antics. Let's get this done. I'm racing against the sun. I had it sitting out in a different area and the plexi started to warp. So I had to fix that, but let's make the first cut. You've seen it. You've already seen the the big uh, mark stain on the channel, stain on the cabinet. Yes, that plexiglass defeated me, not in a bad way, ultimately. Uh, you can see here, I'll walk into frame. You can kind of see, it's, it's hard to notice. You saw earlier in the video, right here is where it cracked and it was due to nothing more than my impatience. It had nothing to do with the way it was being cut. If I would have essentially been more patient, you would have actually seen a uh, piece of plexiglass that was not broke. I was using a battery powered Dremel, a cheap one, and the battery really sucked. It only worked for a few minutes at a time and I should have just walked away, mowed the grass, did things, you know, kind of like in the video, and come back after it would charge, and then go and do something else, and do that back and forth. Or I should have just went and bought, an, you know, a, a corded Dremel and just got this done. If I would have had a corded Dremel, it would have never happened. I got impatient and I grabbed for the jigsaw, with the plexiglass blade that I never believed in from the beginning because this is really thin. I think ultimately it would have been all right, but what had happened was I set it down to cut with the jigsaw and I put it on top of something that was just a little bit higher. It was basically 
I don't know, hard to explain, like a screw or a piece of metal that, that stuck up on the little table that I was using. And when this slammed down because that jigsaw catches it and it was going so fast, it vibrated against that piece of metal just enough to crack that. So I lifted it off and I could see it was broke. And yeah, unfortunately, there is a there is a mar here, right, kind of thing. But, you know, overall, it's not that bad. It's not even noticeable here. When I did the close up in the beginning of the video, you, you obviously saw it. But um, it is not bad here. And you can see kind of what it ultimately looks like. It's got the PCs running. That's why you have the at games logo. That's the touch screen right there. That's just a, a wallpaper and, and I'll even show it as we go in. But um, that can, you know, obviously stay there. Whatever, whatever we're doing, it doesn't really impede any of the, the, the games built into it. It just stays on there. So it kind of looks factory. Now, what I could do here is possibly put a, you know, create a black piece of metal that would frame this and would kind of cover to the edges and you you wouldn't even see the the crack the crack doesn't go all the way over here it just goes right to the speaker hole and obviously that's just because it hit right in that spot and it's it's a circle so there's nothing there so it didn't go any further but it does go all the way to the edge of where the speaker is it didn't hurt anything there like you know the whole thing is complete and firm you can't pull it or anything like that so but you can see table here it looks factory so what we're going to do is now take a look at some other tables i'll probably cut my mic off and we'll just look at the table well, i'll leave the mic on i just won't talk but you know we'll look at the tables and see kind of what this dmd looks like but these are going to be running on the pc there's going to be some from uh pinball fx3 I'll show, and then there's gonna be some from Pinball Arcade with uh, the Backlass software. And we'll talk about that in a separate video, but Pinball Arcade only allows you to play without any mods or anything like that with the Playfield table. But you can buy a software through Arcuda, and it costs you $150 if you just wanna get the one that works with Steam. And that gives you Backlass. I know it's a ridiculous price. Backglass and DMD, plus it supports, uh, which you can't really see in the frame here, but an Xbox Connect uh, sensor for uh, some additional features. But I bought the $500 version, ridiculously priced. It does the back box, it has the, all the other stuff, and it comes with 76 tables. And some of the tables are interesting because they're not available anywhere anymore. And they are tables that you would find on PCFX3 which we may do some videos down the road of kind of showing the difference, but I'll show some of those tables. The, those are about the only two outside of if you were to do something, you know, more custom with, uh, you know, future pinball or something like that. But I'm just gonna show what's easily accessible. Um, uh, Zecharia, Zecharia, they on the PC side do not support a separate DMD, so we won't be talking about that. Um, there's nothing to show there. They're basically the exact same as they are built onto the table or the, ta the ones you can buy uh, in the download codes and put them into the table through at games. So let's take a look at some of that, see what it looks like on here, and then uh, we'll follow up at the end with final thoughts. So hang tight. Okay, now we've got the table kind of set up. Uh, it's, it's running off the PC. You've got your three separate screens. The main play field screen is number one. Uh, number two essentially is just in the middle of those. The way they're configured is the DMD. And then number three is the back box. Sometimes with like pinball arcade, you have to do some toying around with it, like start it, turn it off, start it again. Uh, with pinball FX3, everything seems to run just fine. So uh, let's jump into pinball FX3 first. Oh, I think it just went to sleep. Oh, come on. We were just here. Let me grab my mouse. You should be able to, there we go. It's just uh, passed out, I guess. You can run everything with the arcade stick here and uh, we can just jump in. Now I do, and this is a weird thing and I'll cover this more in depth when we go through that Arcuda software. Um, it is not the Arcuda software, or sorry, it's not the pinball arcade that runs within Steam. I do own that, but the one that I'm running to have the backboard support 
is a standalone. It's its own software. It's got a bunch of USB keys you gotta use. It's crazy, we'll talk in depth. But I just basically tell Steam to be the launcher. So it runs through here and uses the pinball controls for the version that would be in Steam, the same pinball uh, control configuration. I'll talk about that more in depth, but just so you know, when I'm running Pinball Arcade here, it's actually a standalone software that is just being launched by Steam. Um, Pinball FX3 is the one that I bought off of Steam. So let's take a look, we'll jump in. And I'll keep the mic on. I probably won't talk much here, except maybe at the beginning of each table so we can kind of, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll talk through a little bit of it so we can point out some of the interesting parts of the DMD. But um, yeah, here's Pinball FX3. Let's jump into this. I'll try to stand as far as I can over here so it, you get a, at least a view of it. There we go. And uh, yeah, we can, the way it's configured, we can pretty much run everything from the, the arcade control panel. I'll turn this up a little bit. There we go. So let's, um, let's take a look at, first off, a, uh, oh, I guess a, uh, per, what would you call it? A proprietary table of Zen. Um, one that they've made, you know, something that they've made. So at the end of the, the part one, I showed Paranormal. So we'll take a look at like Epic Quest. Epic Quest. I can already see that I need to go in and configure my back panel here a little bit to the left and right. You can do that. It's all your um, adjustments, but I think the DMD will be fine. It's pretty much plug and play. Yeah, it's, it's nice, centered. This could be over just a hair because I can see a little bit of a black line there and I know that the image is bigger than that. But all in all, for what we're doing right now, we can we can deal with it. So I'm just going to continue. Oh, the treasure just waiting to be wrested from the cold clutches of evil. You can see in the back, you know, it gives you all of your launch the ball and, and information. So we'll go ahead. It looks really good. It stretches well. I mean, Obviously, it's not maybe the right configuration or the right resolution or aspect ratio, but all in all, I mean, I think it looks good. I don't mind it being an odd aspect ratio for it. It doesn't bother me at all. I think it looks good that big. And it's just nice to have like, you know, that all separated. I, I am using this on, uh, I believe it's on either view one or view two. There's seven different view levels with, which gives you, you know, zoom in and zoom out. This is more of like the standard arcade cabinet table view. So I think that's good. We'll, we'll take a look at another table here. Oops. There we go. Jump out of here. Uh, let's take a look at a Williams table. So Williams is going to be, you know, more of the, the configuration for a narrower uh, DMD. But I, again, I feel they stretch pretty well on this. So let's take a look at Medieval Madness. I've really fell in love with that table after getting that pin bar arcade. Um, I've been playing it a lot. Yeah, you can see it's, it's just offset right here. This, what's kind of funny is the Pinball FX3 uh, back glasses, or I guess like what people have put out there for Pinball FX3, because Pinball FX3 doesn't actually have back glasses for it. Um, what people have had, it's it's all the Williams tables are really narrow. They're, they're kind of cut, so they don't fill the entire screen. Um, their resolution is just different, but the ones that are in Pinball Arcade actually fill perfectly, so it looks really good. So I've been thinking about going and grabbing those image files um, out of the software there, if I could, and then dropping them into Pinball FX3, because you could put whatever you wanted up in here. It's just, as long as you rename it the right file name, it's gonna call up whatever that image is. So you can change those out. So this is Medieval Madness. Again, you can even see on this that it should be a little bit more narrow, 
but it's you know a, a taller aspect ratio or a, a height aspect ratio is higher and it's narrower in terms of width but it still looks really good i think yeah, i think it looks great obviously i'm biased so again this is like view one or two i can't remember oh this one's a push button so some tables uh some of the williams tables are push button instead of the plunger so that's why that was so yeah you get the the little views This table also does a really good job with the exciters that are in here. Um, no matter which version you're playing, either if you could get your hands on the Pinball Arcade one or the PCFX or Pinball FX3, um, the exciters really respond well to this table. It is view two. I just saw it pop up there. Ooh. But yeah, you get all the nice little things, little uh, games. If you have games that they're, you know, DMD games, you can play all of those and you can watch on there. It looks really good to me. So let's jump out of here. Yeah, there's one right there. It's like, choose the animal. You gotta hit both. So that was the bowling ball. But yeah, we'll jump out of that. Let's, um, let's take a look at uh, Jurassic Park. This is another Zen created table uh, based on obviously an IP of Jurassic Park. Uh, yeah, we'll just start a new one. Again, you know, the colors change depending upon how they set it up. It looks really good. Well, this is New World, I think. Or, well, the new Jurassic Park. I am having an issue where my screen, um, I don't know what it does. It, it, it looks like it's tearing or it's, it's just the right hand side. And I've found out that it's actually something to do with a bad exciter. So I've got to fix that. And I'm going to do a video on how to fix that coming up. Because you can replace the exciters. But if it vibrates too much, I think it pulls too much power or... It's shorting somehow, and that's pulling too much, and it makes the screen vibrate on the right-hand side, but it's not the screen's bad. Oh, it did it on this side here, too. So, yeah, you can see the DMD looks pretty good there. Let's jump out. We'll do uh, one more table here. Uh, let's do, um, let's do Skyrim. Skyrim's got a different color back, uh, DMD. It kind of matches up with the, the colors here. So it's more like a bluish green. Again, it even gives you information. It gives you information like your character level and stuff like that in it. And this one, I think you use the plunger. And again, just it just adds to it. I mean, in my mind, it, it's the way it should have been. Um, although, you know, I'm, I was not unhappy. Let's just say that. Uh, with the the ALP, the way it comes, I just thought, well, if I can do it, why wouldn't I do it, right? It's one of those things. So, um, you know, being able to toy around with it, it worked out. I don't know if I would tell everybody to go do this. There's, you know, again, as I said, I, I think if I was to do it a second time, the plexiglass would be perfect. There wouldn't be any problem. I'd, I'd know what I did wrong. Um, I think that you probably could easily do it without breaking it. And I think it was just, again, my impatience that caused it. But 
I think also that, you know, the version, I think it's Arcade Mod Up has, where it's a little bit bigger box and it has two separate screens and it's just a drop-in piece. It has some funky artwork, but you might be able to get them to copy the artwork, I don't know. But you might be able to get some artwork that, that matches more along the table. But for $399, it's really not that bad to have something that you're gonna be really happy with. Um, I wouldn't, again, tell anybody to do this. If fear that you'd screw up your arcade machine or your pinball machine, and um, I don't want to be blamed for that, uh, or I don't want to be the cause for somebody breaking theirs or causing trouble. Um, I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to make it for mine, so I filmed it. That's why you see it here. Let's jump out of um, Pinball FX3, and we'll quickly look at that Pinball Arcade and see what those DMDs look like. It's not really going to be too much of a difference, but um, there are some differences. And that's the pinball arcade right there. Now, when it starts up, sometimes this one, it can screw up a little bit on the back glass, but then it fixes itself. I don't know why that is. But uh, yeah, this is the standalone software running within Steam. And um, since we already looked at uh, Medieval Madness, let's take a look at the version that Pinball Arcade made that they no longer sell. Welcome to my realm. I think it actually has better sound overall um, but you can see the dmd is a little bit more or the sorry the back glass is a little bit more stretched but it looks really good dmd looks great this one has some levels of depth to the uh table so i've got it on like view two here instead of view there's four views um, number one is completely flat looks kind of weird and i might be able to show that here let me get in on that. Let's see, where's my indicator? There it is. Uh, so there we go. So that's view two, view three. It's like really deep and this all stretches out. And what that's used for is the connect software, which again, we'll show in another video. This is view one, it looks really flat. Um, view two is what I kind of play with a lot on here, either one or two. So let's use that. So this is a push button again. Oh, no, wait, on this one, it's actually a launcher. I don't know why that's different. Maybe they just decided to make it differently. I don't know. But again, DMD, nice and animated. Looks looks reasonable. So we already looked at this table again. We see that. I just wanted to show a table that looked, you know, kind of the same. Again, the DMD looks like that. But they've got some older machines that really look nice on here. So let's jump out. And the one that I'm thinking of right away is Black Knight. It's got a more interesting older style DMD. And that is Black Knight. Now this is the really old one. Yeah, let's let's not. Oop, I wanted to back out of that one. Because see here, some of theirs do not have uh, DMDs. So this is a really old table. Um, it does have the animated back glass, unlike PCFX or uh, Pinball FX3. But there's no DMD separate here. So let's, let's back out of this one. And let's find the other Black Knight, which has a DMD. It's, it's the 19... Late 80s version of Black Knight, I guess. And that is, I, I always lose track of where things are on this, there it is, right there, on this menu system that they have. It's, it's not the greatest, but whatever, it's not a real thing. But see, this is a nice different design of a, of a, a DMD. And I, th I thought this was really cool that they actually put in different styles of DMD, not dot matrix, but this one's more like a, I don't know what it would have been. It's, 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 you know, kind of like an old eighties clock, right? Where I forget what they would call those electromechanical. I don't know what it would be called. So again, this is another table you can't get from pinball FX or uh, pinball arcade any longer. Whoops. Got this weird thing too with the plunger it doesn't want to always fire off but that's sensitivity that i've got something i've got to go in and adjust for 
This is a dual layer table, two layers, two stages to it, two levels, whatever you want to say. There's, there definitely seems to be like a slower pace to the pinball, pinball arcade games as well versus uh, Pinball FX3. So that's it. I just thought that was neat. It's a different style of DMD, so it actually is something you wouldn't see on Pinball FX3. Let's jump out of here again. Um, now, they also support... So... Uh, Farsight Studios is the same company that made the pinball tables, the 30 Gottlieb tables that were on the ALP. They're also in Pinball Arcade on PC, so you can actually see what they look like. And I think there's a few that have a DMD as well. I'm not 100% sure which ones have it. I think this Rescue 911 has it. So this actually will have a DMD itself, um, unlike on the one that comes with the ALP table. So this is what the DMD is supposed to look like. Uh, oops, over here. Ah, it's doing that again. I gotta go in and adjust my settings. But yeah, there's there actually is a DMD for this. It's just because you know, obviously there's no DMD stock on a on a Legends Pinball. You don't see it, but it's actually here on the PC version. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the table there. And we'll take a look at one more table on here. We'll do again more in depth on the Pinball Arcade games from Arcuda. But let's do um, the most recent game that's on here which is Doctor Who. This is from 2016, I think it is. So it'll look a little bit different. It's a little bit more animated, a little bit more movie-like. Not, not like the um, some of the very, very new tables. Let's go ahead and fire this off. Now, I think this one is... Nope, it's got a plunger. No time to waste. Again, a little bit, a uh, little bit sharper, I guess, DMD, but you know, still very similar. But you can see, I mean, even for the aspect ratio being different, still looks pretty good. And I think that will cover it on here. So, oops, I can change through that. You can even see changing through the different challenges, like Weeping Angels. Uh, I think we select that by hitting, no, we pulled the plunger, is it? Yeah. Oh, right back in. So, yeah, let's take a look at the final thoughts on everything here and was it worth it? And then uh, we'll call it good. So hang tight. All right, folks, so final thoughts on this. Would I have done this again? Yes, I would have done this again. I would do it tomorrow. Um, again, knowing more than what I knew even going in and what tools I should use, uh, definitely. And I think it adds a lot to the table. I enjoy it, um, especially because I play probably more of the PC FX3 and Pinball Arcade than I even play of the tables that are on the machine. As I'm working throughout the day, I take a break. It's easier to go and play um, just the tables built in, but definitely in the evening. When I'm playing, uh, I'll turn that PC on in the back or in the machine, and then I will sit there and play those tables for hours, right? Just an hour or two, just hanging out, um, especially on like a Friday or Saturday when I've got nothing to do in the evening other than record videos, because that's when this is being recorded. But um, it's definitely worth it in my mind. Now, it doesn't it really do anything more right now other than when, if I have it on and I'm not uh, playing the PC tables and I'm on here. It just shows that at games logo. So it looks kind of like a, you know, a standard or factory look to it. But in general, I didn't want it to do anything more. Uh, you can have it to where like the Steam menu system for um, big picture shows up here. So uh, that can be on while you're playing the table as well. I don't really know what that would be for. I guess I could put some software in there uh, that you could just touch on to like play music. 
I'm sure I could come up with something. But, and then we'll also do a separate video on pinball arcade. I guess it's our CUDA edition, the, the, the one that you get 76 tables for and it's a ridiculous price. So we'll do a separate video on that because it's kind of neat. And then I do have, you know, after I was thinking about it, I have a couple more videos for the ALP thought out um, that'll be shorter, but kind of showcase um, different tables, the versions of the different tables, and it'll include some Nintendo Switch in it, as well as uh, different versions that would be between Pinball FX3 and Pinball Arcade, and uh, you know potentially even some other tables that I might be able to find across across other systems that we could do some comparisons. So a little bit more, not so much focused on the ALP, but it'll have something to do with it for sure. And it, uh, it should be pretty cool. So hope you do enjoy this. Uh, hope you got something out of it. Again, I would do this all over again. It was not that uh, stressful when I, as I make it to be a joke, but I do wish that I could have done it without breaking the plexiglass a little bit, but I'll live and um, I'll keep playing. I barely even noticed it and I know what I did. So I'm, I'm not too worried about people coming over and seeing it because they probably won't even notice it. But appreciate everybody for stopping in. Do give us a follow if you could. Subscribe, we'd love to have you come back. Check out more stuff on the channel. Also give this video a like because you know, disliking it doesn't really do anything anymore. But uh, I'd love for you to give it a like and let me know this is something you want to see more of or something you are interested in. And then also definitely leave a comment below in the video. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. I mean, obviously there's plenty of people that are woodworkers. There's plenty of people that have worked with power tools. There's plenty of people that are gonna tell me how I could have done this without breaking it or how bad I did of a job or whatever. That's completely fine. I'm not too worried about it because it's done and I kind of know where it was a mistake, but um, there's probably other ideas. I should have, in my mind, did it all with a Dremel, but then I even had some people on part two or part one, I think, uh, say, hey, if it was something you could have used acetoner or some kind of like paint thinner and gotten the black off, maybe that would have been an idea. I don't think you could because I think it's actually through the plexiglass. I don't know how it is, but I don't think that would have worked, but it might have. Who knows? But again, happy to uh, entertain uh, suggestions and, and some ideas and things like that. It's only going to help other people if they try to do it, right? I hope. Again, nobody really takes this as a tutorial. It's not. It was just me trying to figure it out. And you can see what happened. It did break. But um, I, I do hope that, uh, you know, the community would work together to figure things out better than, than what I did. And I mean, there's probably a bunch of stuff on uh, Reddit and other things that you can find. So until next time, folks, thank you for watching. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.